to another edition of Metaphysics of the Gods, where we discuss issues and topics relating to metaphysics, astrology and astrotheology. Here we delve into the dark recesses of hidden knowledge in an attempt to draw out the truth which has been suppressed and distorted by a sinister hidden hand over centuries of control and manipulation. Metaphysics and astrology are the foundations to understanding universal consciousness, 360 degrees of holistic wisdom as opposed to one degree of compartmentalized academic knowledge. The human mind can be expressed as a triad of consciousness, three areas interacting to promote the human biological experience, within an interwoven relationship occurring between the mind, universal energetic forces and cosmic consciousness. As above, so below. This interrelationship has been explored and expressed by various credible minds throughout human history, documenting the profound relationship between the planets and all aspects of human consciousness. Our level of awareness within this triad relies upon harmonious communication between each area. The focal conscious mind represented by the Sun is our sole connection to the higher mind's sea of infinite possibility, the Logos. The subconscious represented by the moon is our spiritual connection to that higher mind Logos. And so it is written, The first man Adam was made a living soul, the last Adam was made a quickening spirit. When we analyse the individual astrological glyphs for the planets within our solar system, we find they are essentially made up of various combinations from three basic components the soul, the spirit and the physical. When looking at the planetary glyphs in this manner, one can appreciate the fundamental characteristics and nature of each planet's energetic influence. It becomes easy to see how Jupiter resonates a powerful frequency of spirit over physical matter, with its glyph being a crescent over a cross. Saturn, on the other hand, is the opposite, with the cross of physical matter taking precedence over the crescent of spirituality. When our ancestors observed the planets from their perspective here on Earth, they noticed that all the visible planets not only moved around the Earth, but the Sun as well. If we look at Mercury's orbit, the planet closest to the Sun, we find it has an 88-day cycle and that over the course of one Earth year, Mercury will conjunct the Sun three times, every 116 days. A conjunction is an aspect where both planets are considered close enough together that their energies combine into a mixed frequency. A harmonious conjunction can be observed when Mercury and the Sun unite, where the focal conscious Sun, from our earthly perspective, is in line with the communicative nature of Mercury, the messenger, energizing various levels of consciousness with communicative potential. These planetary movements, with their energetic rhythmic cycles, influence both our etheric and biological bodies, while impacting the natural environment which we live in. 
The number three, synonymous with the planet Mercury, symbolizes complete harmonious unity between the three areas of consciousness. Hence the Holy Trinity and the earthly parameters of time, past, present and future, and space, breadth, width and height. Buddhism emerged from Hinduism as a non-theistic religion philosophy. In Sanskrit, Buddha with one D is the name given to the planet Mercury. Gautama Buddha with two Ds was a sage, the awakened or enlightened one. In Buddhism, there is no creator or supreme God. The only way to salvation is through your own spiritual improvement. Although the Buddha, through his teachings, Dharma, will show the way or path, it is up to the individual to decide their own route to Nirvana. There are many correlations between Mercury and the number three in Buddhism. Physical expressions of numerology within ceremonies and symbolism subconsciously align the individual to the energetic nature of specific planetary frequencies. Each planet, due to its orbiting rhythmic cycles, will lean towards various numbers or combinations of numbers. Christians align themselves with the planet Jupiter, which was known as Zeus in Greek. This is where the name Jesus comes from. It is Jupiter Zeus, Jew Zeus. The glyph for Jupiter is the number four, and Jupiter's day is Thursday, the fourth day of the week. Christians chose the cross as their sacred symbol, which also has four points. Muslims align themselves with Venus, the planet synonymous with the number five. They pray five times a day and adhere to the five pillars of Islam. Their holy day is Friday, Venus Day. On top of some mosques, you will see a crescent moon and a five-pointed star. Their first pre-dawn prayer meeting, known as the Fajr, takes place when Venus appears on the horizon at Mecca. Jews align themselves with the planet Saturn, which is commonly depicted as a black cube. The number six is also synonymous with Saturn which is reflected in its hexagonal weather system at its North Pole. Saturday is the Jewish Sabbath, the sixth day of the week. They also use the six-pointed star of David to represent the Jewish faith. When Mars is opposite the Sun, from our earthly perspective, our focal consciousness, Sun, is opposed to the proactive physical nature of Mars. This will increase tension and stressful talk as these two bodies conflict and fight for dominance. As Mars orbits the Sun, which both appear to orbit around the Earth, Mars will produce eight oppositions during a complete cycle. Venus also produces an interesting geometric pattern as it orbits both the Sun and the Earth. During its orbit, it will produce five conjunctions with the Sun. This will mix the focal conscious aspect of the Sun and the love and liking aspect of Venus, combining to create a powerful energy of healing, beauty and aesthetic pleasure. These three planetary rhythms are the foundations to the aspects we see in an astrological chart. From knowing your time and place of birth, an astrological natal chart can be produced showing the position of the planets within the 12 signs of the zodiac. In addition to the 12 signs there are also 12 houses which are essentially another 12 signs within an inner wheel orientated by the specific time of birth. Deciphering the potential in a chart depends upon the skill, intuition and experience of the astrologer. The chart can reveal many things concerning an individual's soul, spirit and physical disposition. Although, along with their strengths, weaknesses and overall purpose behind this latest round of earthly incarnation, the position of the planets within the signs and houses reveal a great deal concerning one's character. But to gain further depth and insight, the planetary aspects 
need to be explored and understood. Conflicting aspects are based on the 90 and 180 degree angles associated with Mars's opposition to the Sun. These are hard aspects which see the planet's unique energies in conflict with each other, often promoting some form of action similar to snooker balls banging into one another. These martial-like aspects create various hard astrological patterns such as the square, T-square and Grand Cross. A T-square is when three planets are aspected in such a way as to produce two 90 degree angles with one opposition. The interesting thing about this hard conflicting pattern can be found in the empty area furthest away from the T-square. The signs and houses affected by the T-square are under pressure from stressful talk as the planets oppose and square off against one another. The area furthest away from this stress is considered to be a safe haven, like a pressure valve releasing, where the individual can find peace and comfort. When an individual has a grand cross in their chart, they will find conflict and stress in nearly all areas of life, with no safe haven to escape to. Many of them will go about their daily business bearing this cross, literally feeling like they are being crucified on a daily basis. Due to the symmetry of the square, T-square and Grand Cross, they will influence either the cardinal fixed or mutable signs of the chart. A cardinal Grand Cross can promote an individual into starting many projects at the same time, working in fits and starts, desiring to do everything all at the same time. This is sometimes referred to as a stagecoach to hell. The fixed Grand Cross, on the other hand, sees people becoming confused as to which direction to go in next. With a sense of perpetual frustration, they invariably end up in the same place, like being nailed to a cross, constantly battling as though the whole world is against them. The mutable Grand Cross denotes difficulty in maintaining focus on a particular task or conversation without being distracted by one thing or another. However, many people with squares and T-squares have to learn from an early age to compensate for their difficulties. This often motivates many of these people into finding ways around their problems. The more restrictions you find in a person's chart, the stronger the person must become in order to overcome these challenges. Harmonious aspects are based on the rhythmic cycles of Mercury and Sun conjunctions, enhancing ease of communication between the two bodies. These aspecting angles are 30, 60 and 120 degrees, with the latter, the trine, being the most powerful. When three planets are all at 120 degrees from one another, this is referred to as a grand trine. An equilateral triangle expressing harmonious communication between all three bodies. Someone with a grand trine in their chart are considered well balanced in the areas concerned. At 120 degrees, the grand trine will influence one of the four elements within the chart, either earth, air, fire or water. This effectively coheses and energizes the element in scope harmoniously unifying the cardinal fixed and mutable aspects of that element. Due to its easy nature, this has sometimes been considered as a demotivating aspect, even lazy because the trine's potential sometimes manifests gifts around these people without them having to make too much of an effort. It is a complete contrast to the T-square or Grand Cross, where the individual feels the need to overcompensate for the stressful difficulty by either blowing off steam in areas away from the T-square or continually battling through the difficulties to get things done. The harmonious energy within the Grand Trine can be viewed as a closed conversation between the three planets and signs involved. In order to tap into its potential 
an outlet needs to be found, otherwise the gifts associated within this rotating vortex could go unutilized and viewed by others as laziness. Just like the T-square has an outlet, the Grand Trine also needs one. This outlet can be found by adding a fourth planet into the mix, at a midpoint between any two of the Grand Trine's planets. This pattern is known as a kite, where emphasis is placed on the fourth planet's position, activating and directing its potential towards an outlet for this closed cosmic conversation. The outlet to the Grand Trine will be in an element opposite to the Trine's element. A watery Trine of high emotion will find an outlet in one of the practical earthly signs, and a fiery Trine will influence outlets within air signs. Kurt Cobain had an interesting kite in his natal chart. A watery Grand Trine with Uranus as the outlet in his first house of earthly Virgo. Here we see Kurt Cobain's sensitive emotional outlet associated with his watery Grand Trine being physically expressed through Uranus, the planet of rebellion and unpredictability, in the earthly sign of Virgo I examine. This is in his first house, the house concerning the focal projection of the self. If we expand on this outlet concept to its full potential, we find our chart with two Grand Trines forming a Star of David pattern, otherwise known as a Grand Sextile or Solomon's Seal. This chart pattern is a remarkable reflection of harmonious potential in nearly all areas of a person's life, along with many outlets. This has the potential to produce someone who has great natural ability and exclusive opportunities when it comes to furnishing their natural talents. Throughout history, cultures that understood the power behind this knowledge would seek out individuals who had a Solomon seal in their birth chart, promoting them forward as leaders or even kings. The wise men of old were astrologers. They would map out the heavens to produce future forecasts as to when a Solomon's seal pattern would appear. From this, they would be able to work out the time and the place where this would most likely occur. The wise men would follow their star to specific locations bearing gifts in the hope that a child would be born who they could promote as their new king. Incidentally, Jesus was born in a manger, which is a trough or feeding box for farm animals found in stables and farmhouses. The other place where we see many animals is around the zodiac wheel. Due to the nature of Jupiter and Saturn, they will always oppose one another in a perpetual conflict stretching the fabric of time and space. Like sparring partners, they battle it out, seeking to draw us in to their particular tapestry of energetic frequencies. These opposing energies are reflected in the glyphs used to symbolize these two planets. Jupiter is the crescent over the cross, the subconscious spirit over the physical, whereas Saturn is the opposite, the cross over the crescent. Jupiter is also known as Jove, which is where the expression jovial comes from. As we can see, the energies associated with Jupiter are positive compared with those of Saturn. Christianity has aligned itself with Jupiter and all its optimistic expressions, resulting in a religion offering belief, faith, hope and a positive future. Being the largest and most expansive planet in our solar system, it is therefore no coincidence to see Christianity as the largest and most expansive of all man's religions. Saturn, on the other hand, was adopted by Judaism as their favourable planet of worship, hence why Jesus, Jupiter Zeus, during the age of Pisces, could not be their Messiah. They would need to wait 
until Saturn rules during the age of Aquarius and throughout the age of Capricorn for their Saturnian Messiah. Saturn is the physical over the spiritual, therefore it dominates materialism and this physical experience. Satan is Saturn. He is the prince of the material, physical, earthly realm, ruling both Capricorn and Aquarius in the lower dark regions of the zodiac. He is accused of being the prince of darkness, whereas Jupiter, Jesus, is the king of the planets, the lord of optimism, good fortune, light and grace. Both planets have the potential to influence us in totally different ways. To appreciate this, we first need to understand the mechanisms behind how our thoughts and speech interact with our perception of reality. There is an old saying, you reap what you sow. The point is this, whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and whoever sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. The zodiac holds many synchronized secrets, a perfect poetical reflection of how universal consciousness manifests in this physical plane. Experienced by our five senses, first comes the thought, in the mind, the head, ruled by Aries, I am. God said to Moses, I am who I am. This is what you are to say to the Israelites. I am has sent me to you. We are what we think. All that we are arises with our thoughts. With our thoughts we make the world, Buddha. From Aries, I am, we move to Taurus, the throat. This is where thoughts are turned into words. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The Lord merely spoke, and the heavens were created. He breathed the Word, and all the stars were born. As we are made in the image of God, and to His likeness, we too have the ability to shape our own reality, bringing to us the harvest of what we sow. From a combination of thoughts and words, we reap the fruits which grow in our subconscious gardens. From the thought comes the word, and from the word comes the act. This leads to habit, which forms character and destiny. If one's thoughts are full of Jupiterian optimism, then one's world will reflect this. Jupiter is also a planet associated with the present and future, as opposed to Saturn, which is preoccupied with the past. A disposition of optimism, following the ways of Jupiter, can manifest all these energetic frequencies associated with Jupiter's abundance and goodwill, essentially fulfilling many of the teachings of Jupiter's greatest ambassador, Jesus Christ. I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness but will have the light of life. I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. In your relationships with one another, have the same mindset as Christ Jesus.
our physical perspective, many religious philosophers teach us that the path to enlightenment is to train our focal consciousness to be in the now. This truly is the secret of how to live in harmony with all levels of consciousness. To focus one's perspective on the now is to live and to fulfill our life's purpose according to the Creator, whatever you perceive Him to be. The opposite of live, L-I-V-E, is evil. It is to fail in one's attempt at living in the now by not living today, but dwelling in the past. The past tense of live is lived, which is the devil spelt backwards. The past is the domain of Saturn, the planet of pessimism, restriction and control. The devil was known as Diabolos in ancient Greek, a name derived from two words, divide and abolish. With a mindset and disposition in tune with Saturn's pessimistic obsession with the past, one can see how an individual can create a very bleak future for themselves. Saturn is the accuser, divisive accusations which abolish the individual's ability to live in the now, preventing a person from embracing abundance and the good fortunes associated with the energies of Jupiter and the teachings of Christ. But I am afraid that just as Eve was deceived by the serpent's cunning, your minds may somehow be led astray from your sincere and pure devotion to Christ. Get behind me, Satan. You are a hindrance to me, for you are not setting your mind on the things of God, but on the things of man. We know that we are children of God, and that the whole world is under the control of the evil one. Anyone with a Saturn affliction in their birth chart, for example, a T-square with Saturn as one of the influential planets, can be prone to dwelling on the past or being cursed with a pessimistic disposition. These are people who can go through life mentally and physically accusing themselves and others, sowing the seeds of disappointment and restriction before they begin any task, relationship or journey. This is no way to achieve a life of abundance and good fortune. If these people meet a new potential partner, the Saturn Satan accuser will set the seed of doubt in their minds, frustrating any natural, innocent relationship from blossoming. If Saturn sits opposite Jupiter in a person's birth chart, this would set off confusion in their thoughts. Like snooker balls, the planets would bang each other out of the way to occupy the thoughts solely. This can lead to manic depression and a constant battle between optimism, pessimism, past and present. A Saturnian disposition of self-doubt and self-accusation can suck an individual down into a bottomless spiral of unresolved depression, trapping them within spontaneous reflections of past events, blame and division. This is hell, burning inside under Saturn's suffocating energy of self-inflicted accusations lacking Jupiterian optimism. Eve was seduced by the serpent in the garden to set the seed of doubt in her mind, a mental process pulling her away from the jovial harmony of living in the now. Like children they were innocent until Diabolos came along. From the voice box or Adam's apple, the thought became the word and the word cast a spell, setting in motion the energetic frequency behind the word. This is how we influence our reality and our future. Our thoughts and words are tremendously important and in order to achieve mastery over one's life, the individual must first have mastery over their thoughts and the things which come out of their mouths. Be alert and of sober mind. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. It is not what goes into the mouth that defiles a person, but what comes out of the mouth. This defiles a person. Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and those who love it will eat its fruits. From aligning one's thoughts, words and actions to specific planets, 
one can draw those energetic vibrations towards them, fulfilling the law of attraction, essentially amplifying the deeds of the focal conscious mind by sowing seeds within the subconscious, the part of the mind which forgets nothing. This is also our connection to the spirit realm. Just as Christians adopted Jupiter as the benchmark for their religious philosophy, Judaism chose Saturn to align with theirs. This Saturnian religion has certainly stood the test of time, being a restrictive, controlling practice which is deeply seated in the past. When we try to express the personality of Jupiter and Saturn, love resonates a higher frequency than that of hate and disaffection. As can be seen by the Doppler shift, higher frequencies within the ultraviolet range are witnessed when two bodies are moving together and attracted to one another, but when they move away in an action of division, abolishing their attraction, the lower frequencies of infrared become dominant. Coincidentally, Jupiter has a higher resonant frequency than Saturn. It all begins to make sense because Satan, Diablo and the Devil are usually depicted in red, symbolizing the lower frequencies of disunity and separation. Old Father Time and the Grim Reaper are also expressions of Saturn's energy, with the latter grimly reaping those Saturnian seeds which have been sown via thoughts and words into the subconscious and out into one's reality or chosen path. The Roman festival of Saturnalia is the predecessor to our modern day Christmas where we see Santa Claus, an anagram of Satan, coming down a chimney during the night. Chimneys are black sooty places where fire and smoke dwell. Modern day Christmas has become a vulgar display of excessive Saturnian materialism with Santa Satan at the helm perverting the spiritual Jupiterian aspect of the season. The whole concept of modern Santa Satan has been carefully designed to target small children in order to subtly socially engineer a belief system in their fragile subconscious minds, which equates the Christmas period with spending enormous sums of money on unnecessary material goods. This has been promoted by organized multinational corporations to boost sales and seduce the masses into debt slavery and usury. Traditionally, Santa would leave gifts for good children in a shoe or a sock. The feet are the domain of Pisces. Bad children would be given a piece of coal as a deterrent for their bad behavior. Saturn has natural rulership over rocks and stones. Coal is a rock which closely resembles a black cube. While Christianity has associated itself with Jupiter through their chosen Messiah, Jesus Christ, Judaism adopted Saturn and its chosen planetary influence. This can be validated by observing the traditions, myths and practices of Orthodox Jews. Many of Saturn's attributes and characteristics are visible in the lives of these people. Unlike Christianity, the growth of Judaism has been very restrictive over the past 2000 years. With only 0.2% of the world's population, it is the smallest of all the main religions. They have kept their traditional style of clothing along with its strict guidelines. Black has always been used to symbolize the planet Saturn, along with the shape of a cube. During weekday morning prayers, some Jews wear a tefillin, two black cubes attached by a black leather strap. One cube is placed on the forehead, while the other is placed on the subordinate arm. Black leather straps are wrapped around the arm and hand in a symbolic gesture, as though the rings of Saturn are being recreated. They are taught to be disciplined and work hard on their faith. With a huge sense of tradition, their religion has withstood the test of time relatively unchanged. Jews cannot enter into public ministry until they reach the age of 30. 
just enough time for Saturn to make one full orbit around the Sun. Their kosher food practice and preparation can be frustrating and restrictive from an outsider's perspective. As Saturn has a permanent hexagram in its North Pole's weather system, the number six has become synonymous with the planet and Judaism. Control, discipline, authority, rules and structure are all necessary for the smooth running of the modern control system, which we all live under. It is therefore no coincidence that any group of people already aligned with these Saturnian qualities should naturally gravitate to influential positions within society's authoritarian and governing structures. Although Jews only make up 0.2% of the world's population, they have a disproportionately high number of people occupying top positions of influence within important organisations. But this is exactly what you would expect from a religious philosophy aligning itself with Saturn's cross of the physical over the crescent of the spirit, placing materialistic mechanisms of control above concepts of spirituality. Jesus was born into a Jewish culture. His mother was Jewish and he lived in a predominantly Jewish area. He worshipped in Jewish temples and preached from Jewish scripts. He was a Jew who was at the forefront of this new age of Pisces, teaching the world about the optimistic energies associated with Jupiter Zeus. He transformed himself from a Saturnian Jew into a Jupiterian Christian, essentially going from Jew to Zeus, Jew Zeus. The story of Jew Zeus is an astrological one. The age of Aries, the Ram, ruled by Mars, was coming to an end, and the significant characters of that age, like Abraham, Abram, Moses, Marses, Tutmoses, and Ramesses, needed a replacement someone to reflect the new age of Pisces while shaking off the Aries-Mars association with Rams. The new Messiah had to represent the optimistic goodwill aspects of Jupiter in Pisces throughout the age of belief and the two fish. Jesus became the chosen figurehead who would represent this. Jewish leaders, aware they had to wait another 2,150 years for their Messiah, Saturn, to take precedence and rule the heavens in the age of Aquarius, did not see Jesus as their Messiah or King of the Jews. To them he was just another rebellious false claimant. They did not want the optimistic expansive energies of Jupiter interfering with their restrictive controlling Saturnian traditions. At the age of 30, after Saturn had completed one full orbit of the sun, Jesus began his ministry. Jewish elders were not happy to see this self-styled preacher of optimism travelling around teaching this new philosophy based on Piscean goodwill, belief and abundance. It was contrary to all their traditional teachings of Saturn's restrictive control. In a perfect reflection, of this divisive energy, the Jews started the process of accusation. Jesus was put on trial before the Sanhedrin, where Jewish leaders questioned him and deliberated before finding him guilty of blasphemy, after which they wanted him dead. The punishment for blasphemy by a Jewish trial was to be stoned to death, as Saturn is the ruler over rocks and stones. This is a fitting punishment for any culture associating and aligning themselves with Saturn. However, the Jewish elders wanted to see Jesus crucified, a Roman punishment reserved only for the worst and most dangerous criminals. Jesus was sent to Pontius Pilate, the governor of Judea, where he was questioned about the accusations made about him by Jewish elders. Jesus did not speak much in defence of the accusations, but what he did say reflects the glyph and fundamental metaphysical construct of Jupiter, the crescent of spirituality over the cross of the physical.
My kingdom is not of this world. If it were, my servants would fight to prevent my arrest by the Jews. But now my kingdom is not of this realm. It was customary during the Passover to allow the crowd to release a prisoner of their choice. When Pilate offered them the option of freeing Jesus, who symbolized the truth and the light, or Barabbas, a notorious bandit murderer, symbolizing the worst aspects of Saturnian pessimism, restrictions and opposition to truth and light. The crowd chose to free Barabbas, a reflection of how society, when given the choice, will instinctively lean towards the bad things which society can offer as opposed to truth, light and wisdom. When Pilate asked the crowd, who had been stirred up by the leading Jewish priests, what should be done with Jesus, they cried out, Crucify him! Jupiter is king of the planets, but its domain has greater scope within the spiritual realm as opposed to Saturn, which rules the physical material world. Hence why the Jews, Saturn worshippers, had to be the ones who initiated the end of the physical Jesus. It is part of the ongoing battle between the two opposing energies. The crucifixion of Jesus on a cross has many astrological connotations to it. The cross in a zodiac chart, known as a grand cross, is full of conflicting hard aspects, nailing Jupiter's optimistic potential down. The cross is also a four-pointed star, reflecting the glyph of Jupiter's resemblance to the number four. Thursday is Jupiter's day, the fourth day of the week. Music